Hi everyone, my name is Julie. This is Keep Calm with Books and Coffee. Welcome to the channel. And today I'm going to be talking about The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chakshi. This is a 2023 release that I was actually really excited about uh, because I have read from Chakshi before and enjoyed her duology, uh, her YA duology. This is her first foray into adult fiction and I was excited to see where this went. In this book we are following two timelines. The first is The Bridegroom which is set in present day when uh, Indigo and her husband are traveling back to her childhood home in order to say goodbye to her aunt who is uh, dying currently and uh, this is going to cause some problems for them because when they got married Indigo demanded a pact between them that uh, he would not, her husband would not ask about the secrets of her past and about her childhood and how she kind of grew up and what what happened to her in her life. So uh, going back to her childhood home to a place that seems to want to give him all those answers might cause problems in their marriage. And then we are also following uh, a perspective back in time um, of Indigo's best friend from childhood and we're following Azure as the, her and Indigo grow up together and kind of become friends and what happens as they get older. And also Azure disappeared from the house that they are returning to. So that is also gonna raise a lot of questions and a lot of secrets. So that's where we kick off this story. As always, I will have a list of content warnings down below for you to check out. In the end, I gave this book a 2.75 stars. I did listen to the audiobook and I really enjoyed the audiobook performance. I thought that was excellent. We have a male and a female narrator and we switch back and forth between those points of view and uh, we have different narrators for that. And I really enjoyed that part of it. So let's jump into my full thoughts. What I think this book did well was to create an atmosphere. The book is very fanciful in its writing and it's very vibey, like it's super atmospheric. Throughout this book, I felt everything that was happening felt like it was surrounding me. Like when we walked into the house, I felt the kind of mystery of the house. When we would go back in time with Indigo and Azure, I did feel like there was a shift between our two perspectives. There was um, an, a vibe and atmosphere change between present day and the past, but the house still felt kind of similar. Um, there is a lot of uh, things hanging around Azure as threats, whether they are real or uh, unknown threats, if she's trying to figure out if these, you know, fantastical threats are real. And uh, throughout the book, I think she, the, the, the author created a beautiful atmosphere for us. It's, it's really well done, that part of the story. But that's pretty much where the book, like, sat with me and I could read it for the vibes I could I like if you are interested in a book that is very much about vibes and the plot isn't quite as big a part of it I think you would enjoy this uh but for me the vibes could only take me about a hundred pages and then I needed more plot I needed more information especially since that seemed to me what the, the author was trying to do it seemed like she was trying to set up a plot and a storyline it wasn't all about the vibe even though that was a large part of it the writing also contributes to this because it is very flowery it's very fanciful um, it's full of metaphor and references to other stories to other folklore and mythology which are beautifully done uh, but I think there were too many it never seemed like we settled on a metaphor or a uh, an exact uh, retelling that we were gonna go with. It seemed like every time a new plot point came up we were going through another uh, folklore reference which is cool but it didn't keep me in the story. Again it contributed to the vibes but not the substance of the book. So for me the vibe like I said carried me to about page 100 and then I started asking the questions of what's going on? What are we doing? Why isn't anything happening? Like, what are, where are we going with this? So that started to, you know, really start to impact my reading experience and bring up a lot of questions and take me out of the story because I was starting to get confused about what we were actually kind of building towards. Then something that I don't think is quite the fault of the book, but did affect me, is that uh, this book is marketed as like a full fantasy novel. 
at least it was when I first picked it up, and it's much more in the vein of magical realism and sort of that level and that... I feel like with a fantasy book you need that to like solidify that the magic is real at some point and magical realism is sort of in that vein of was it real was it not was it all in their minds did it actually happen and that is much more where we go with this book and much more what the the vibe of this book is there's a lot of questions so I think I was set up with incorrect expectations about how where our story was going to go and that really ended up hurting me because I just kept expecting more and more answers and more solid evidence to happen and it's much more about the was it or wasn't it or did it happen didn't it happen type story. I don't want to get into spoilers but the also um I predicted sort of the climax of this book and even the way I predicted it I could have been surprised with how it happened and I was disappointed by that. Um, I was really frustrated towards the end of this book um, because for both of, like each one of the perspectives gets a bit of a climax and an explanation of what's happening and you know, kind of your resolution to that time period. And for each one, I had to reread what happened or re-listen to what happened like three times to really understand Wait, is that all it was? Is that actually what happened? Is that all you're going to give us? Um, so for me, when I got to those points, even though I was starting to get, I was bored and a little frustrated with like how the story was because it was surviving on vibes and um, allusions to folklore, fairy tales, mythology and all of that. But I was okay. I was doing okay. I was a little frustrated, but I was still working with it. But I needed to get to the end. I was still curious about the mystery of both of these things that were that were kind of looming over the story. And both of them ended up being just anticlimactic. Like, it felt like we built some of these things up so far, and then there was nothing there. And then it felt like other ones felt like they were being built up really high when there was not a lot of substance to that build up, and then there was nothing there. So for me, even the climax of these books just really fell short. So this book, I could, I enjoyed the atmosphere enough to give it 2.75 stars, but the plot and the substance of this book severely disappointed me. But those are a lot of my thoughts and feelings on The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. I could probably keep talking about this because it was an interesting book and it did have some points that I think if you talked about it with spoilers, you could get into a deeper discussion about it, but I'm kind of trying to do an overall review rather than a spoilery discussion for this. Um, if you have any thoughts or feelings and you want to leave them down below, I will happily chat with you down there. But that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me again, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time. Bye!